Hey guys, welcome to another Fun Friday, where we're going to be looking at lots of stuff, including Daphne, the massive goat who has not had her kids yet, my chicks that I'm incubating right now, which I've already given you a little preview of, and my Aspidolaps lubricus, one of my coral cobras, as well as my Lampropeltis pyromelana, my pyro king snake. Let's do it. We have a few new rabbits. This has been my egg production for the last few days. Are you guys getting into the breakfast foods? One of my favorite poems, 100 Love Sonnets by Pablo Neruda. Wow. Now that is a beautiful snake. My favorite thing about this snake is their cute little Zorro mask. Doesn't he look like a little bandit? These are, I believe they're New Zealand's. Hey. Okay, so I had to do a quick highlight. My new book has come out. It is available on Amazon. It is called Horus, the Metamorphosis of Eonians into Verisovans. I don't love you as if you were a rose of salt, topaz, or arrows of carnations that propagate fire. Not bad. This. These eggs are from one of my young hens, so it's kind of funny. You can see that she's just opening up the cloaca. Her first eggs were very pointy. Huh? Hi. Tyro loves to see them. If you like fantasy at all, this book's for you. Main characters are mermaids and a dragon. Wallabies are growing up. This is Kamina Roo. Oh, don't eat my boot. Look, I brought you a treat. And this year I'm striving to get more copper eggs. The wallabies are turning a year old this month. Here, my new chick eggs are incubating. I'm cutting up a bit of fresh food to take out to the park. I love you as one loves certain obscure things secretly between the shadow and the soul. And I would like some greens and blues. But right now, mostly I have creams, pinks, tans and some brown although there's really none in here right now also i'm saving some of these seeds you might not realize you can turn kitchen scraps into a summer garden but they're only on day six of 21. so this is bendigo do you want some apple benny and yeah, this is pretty much their favorite time in life hello that's amazing basically these creatures live in this beautiful utopia trying to get footage of this woodpecker up in the tree. I love you as the plant that doesn't bloom but carries the light of those flowers hidden within itself. They are about half grown. Their commercial diet is their staple food but they also get hay as well as usually vegetables. Here is our update of where we stand on those three chicken coops right now. The, they are Bennett's wallabies, which means they're going to grow to be about 36 inches tall. You can see they're way bigger than they were, but it is just out of sight. Until dun dun dun, catastrophe hits and they have to go on an epic adventure for survival. Basically, we have them mostly repaired. We just have to finish putting the gates on and finish securing the siding. And thanks to your love, the tight aroma that arose from the earth lives dimly in my body. Here's Alora and Willow, the mungs. And then put in the reinforcements. So uh, what we are going to use to predator proof. So you can see this one still does not have the gate on. So I will definitely be posting the links to this book and the book I published before this. Oh, and just a little heads up. This is a novella, which means that it's like a short novel or a mini novel. But my first book, The Infinidon, is a full-length novel. And it won an award. So check those out. So that's Jemima and Rebecca, two of my female books. Hey, you. Hey, you. There's Peep. Oh, there's Quack back there. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. You guys think I'm out here with goodies, don't ya? Cairo. They're enjoying some special little treats. If you're wondering why they are separated from my other chickens, it's two things. Daphne is getting very big. Here's Cairo. My eco tip is that if you have rose bushes and other trees like I do, the peacocks are doing a little dance out here. What's going on, boys? I think it's funny because when they turn around, instead of a big fancy tail, all they have is this little fluff. Now is the time to be pruning them right in the middle of winter. So we have two males that are, oh, okay. So now we know who the king is. That way when they get that burst of energy come springtime, it's gonna go toward producing flowers and fruits. They're still little kiddos. I love you without knowing how or when or from where. Number one, I want to keep the breed pure, but since she's not laying eggs right now, they actually have the option to join the other chickens anytime they want and they're kind of a solitary breed and so they actually just never go into the park there's Dottie one of my frizzle chicks that's growing up I technically she is a pullet now and there is not her biological mama but the mama who hatched her out October oh you guys made a mess in your pool already so this little uh, duck is an Indian runner. Her name's Sophia. Sometimes I like to throw some fruit in there, especially during the winter time when I don't have wildflowers and the things that they normally eat in the summertime. They need minor repairs, but they are mainly, oh goodness, someone's trying to catch some goats. <laughs> This is the beautiful Aspidolaps lubricus calisi. I love you directly without problems or pride. So it's been interesting because in the wild, they only stay in pouch until they're nine months old, but they are still opting to sleep in pouches sometimes. According to my calendar, I didn't predict that she was due until the end of the month. But she kind of looked like she was in preterm labor yesterday, and her milk's come down. I prefer to stay out here in the corral and sleep separately from all the other birds, which is interesting. Peep. And the peacocks are just trying to show everybody today. They're just going and displaying for everybody. Oh, you know, it's so funny. So they've been courting this chicken. Oh, my Polish, my blue Polish name, Dorothy. She is getting huge. She was kind of showing signs of pre-labor the other day. Panting and getting up and getting down and pawing at the ground, which they do sometimes, but she's getting close. The closest relative is a subspecies, Lubricus lubricus, which is my favorite coral cobra. But ended up with this trio of calisi, and I have to say... In the time that I have owned them, I have enjoyed them immensely. I love you like this because I don't know any other way to love. I have one silver peahen and two standard peahens, but for some reason, the silver peahen and the silver chicken, or blue, are the ones that the peacocks are very most interested in. All the horses are just kind of picking up the last dredges of the food that they got this morning. So this is my silver dapple mare rose. And I know she looks quite fluffy and not very majestic in her winter coat. Except in this form in which I am not, nor are you. Here is my OG hen, Betty. What are you doing? You're a pretty boy. And what are you doing? You're a pretty boy too. The last time I attempted to pair these animals, I have a trio. 
we paired my biggest female and my male and she actually bit him in the head there was not a lot so that's jemima and rebecca two of my female ducks so close that your hand upon my chest is mine so close that your eyes close with my dreams what's going on don't pull my sweater here get some treats here's one of my little cochin pullets dove are you pregnant or fat hey you hey you and this little boy that looks like a moran say hello to the camera betty tell us what you think of having a very large flock to tend She's looking super round and waddly at this point. Is that they're actually a heritage breed out of Asia that has not very often been allowed outside of the families who originated the breed. And so that's one reason why they're not very common in the U.S. Maybe a black copper moran rooster that's growing up. Look at you, little boy. Peep and Quack getting their afternoon snack on. And the birds love to come out here and get on the hay when we leave it on the trailer. And this this little little one looks like a little bantam rooster that's growing up. Another one of my frizzle gals that's growing up. <laughs> so my gals weren't laying a whole lot because it's been winter time. But they will often uh, lay if there are already eggs in here. A homesteader that I listen to recommend leaving balls in the nest to just encourage your hens to lay. Not a whole lot is known about their venom, but it is not considered to likely be fatal. I hope you guys like this one. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.